Two thugs are hired to coerce a lowly accountant into breaking into his boss's safe and steal a mysterious piece of information. Soon the thugs find themselves on the run from the law, the mob, and the Consolidated Car Association. On this episode of Clubhouse Movies Podcast, we discuss No Sudden Move, starring Don Cheadle, Benicio Del Toro, and directed by Steven Soderbergh. I am your host, Mark Rubalcaba, economist and film enthusiast, joined by professional photographer, Mr. Abel Panetta, and rounding out the gruesome twosome, Mr. Jose Rodriguez on sound effects. Gangsters, Detroit, and Ray Liotta, another Goodfellas rehash? Not quite. There's a lot of money at stake, and when secrets need to be kept, ears are keen to hear where the money is and who is paying it out. In this mishmash of Goodfellas meets Guy Ritchie films, are either of those greats done any justice? Let's get into it, man. You know what? I really did feel like this was a mishmash of all kinds of things. Yeah. I, I remember like from even from the titles, like, oh, that's cool, like 70s <laughs> yeah, titles, good kind of kind of uh kind of retro there. But then like yes. It kind of got into some weird like GoPro filmography there. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know how you felt about that, but like I was just sort of watching I'm like this is like crazy wide. And I thought it was just for the credits. I'm like, eh, okay, you know, yeah. we, we can be a little well, weird. And they kept on flashing back and forth between old timey things. Yeah, it really things. it really hurt my eyes. I'm watching it just like because <laughs> it kept going. Yeah. I'm like, just pick just three cameras. Just do three cameras, please. Not even three cameras. God. One good camera. <laughs> yeah, one good camera that doesn't have a lens wider than fish eyes. I know, right? It's Jeez, like, we, man. It's just things that kept on moving back and forth. But I, I don't know. I liked Don Cheadle and I liked Benicio Del Toro. I like Don Cheadle's character. Like yeah. he's he 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 made it. The uh the one that uh I didn't seem to like was there was a little bit sh- too much of the Colkin going on in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, right? It's like, is he gonna go steal the house? What's gonna happen here? I was like it wasn't even the good Colkin. It was like it was like the weird modern one. It was the Colkin that peed himself in the bed. <laughs> Where, the, where did you do that? So in so obviously this is McCul- Kelly Culkin's younger brother is in this movie. Whatever Culkin is his name. <laughs> in he in did, yeah. Home in Alone. The, so in Home Alone. Kyrian. Yeah. So Kyrian Culkin. Kyrian Culkin. So in Home Alone, he is his cousin, um, whose name is I forget. Fuller. Right Fuller. There you go. Fuller. Fuller was full I of think, piss and I would think. pee the bed. Yeah. So that he brought the rubber sheets out for him. He would sleep with that was him. That was him. I dude. thought that was just some like kid that Denver ages, so he's no, in all the movies. That's him, dude. <laughs> that's him right there. I'm amazed he didn't piss himself when he got shot. <laughs> yeah. So this movie, um, I, I, we we don't care about spoilers anymore because I, I think anytime you turn on YouTube or look at a thumbnail these days, like, well, yeah. what about that twist? Yeah, clickbait. Right yeah, there everybody the knows it. Uh, my God, we ha- we actually have the movie like kind of on, like yeah. in the in, and I'm trying in the not to, room. I'm trying not to watch. It, it looks like it's... a magic eye. <laughs> 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 it is. It is terrible, man. It like the thing is, I love the mood that is set in this movie, but I hate like it just you just get sucked right back out of it when you yeah <laughs> yeah man. It's like it's like you're on a spinning ride and you're trying to catch one point. It looks and get like dizzy. I'm on hallucinogens. Yeah, you have to watch this movie on a small screen. You really do. Yeah, because you watch it on your phone, right? Yeah, it's not as bad on a tiny screen. That work. You know, I was thinking about that <laughs> I have too. No idea what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> In the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, uh, like, oh, Steven Soderbergh. <laughs> oh, he's taking a two-hour <laughs> deuce over there. <laughs> and, uh, some some things are hard to like pass through. You, you know? <laughs> yeah. God, stop, like, stop eating sand. God, man. <laughs> but well, yeah, I mean, so one film felt like it was fishbowl. And Ben and Frazier look like a big tuna. <laughs> so. I didn't realize it was him. I had to rewatch it. God. <laughs> I it saw like Ben and Frazier ate Ben and Frazier. Yeah, I saw him on the uh, on the opening credits. I'm like, oh, Brendan Frazier. Oh, my God. What happened to Brendan Frazier? <laughs> God, man. He uh, ate them up. He <laughs> felt like a small... I mean, I don't know. I you mean his, like, like his role in the Yeah, movie? his role is like very... He's there. Yeah, like he didn't need to method act for the first time in his life. Yeah. By gaining weight just to play this role, he could have told. I mean, look at Benicio del Toro; he he, he was just Benicio del Toro in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he he was himself. Uh, Don Cheadle was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. but I really think uh, Benicio del Toro and John Cheadle like they they worked at this when it wasn't. They didn't phone it in as a. Oh yeah, they they put some work in. It was nice a, as a, as a movie. So I, I I would say you know see it for them at yeah. least just because they do a good role. Ray Liotta is really good in this movie. He, yeah. If anything, Ray Liotta is my favorite. And then when we got for some reason Kieran Culkin in this movie. Yeah, he was. He felt totally out of place. They should have got somebody else. Uh, they should have gotten a nobody. Steve Buscemi. I'm just saying. No. 
They oh, could have. Steve Buscemi would have been. Steve Buscemi would have been a good right? grab. He's not a good wise guy. This guy. No, no. He no. like when he spoke too. He's like this movie takes place in he the fifties. Like a slacker. Well, well, that and the yeah, and the <laughs> fact that slacker. this movie took place in the fifties. Like no one spoke like that. Yeah. I mean, so far as we know. Yeah, no, it was like very modern. Like yeah. he he was like taken from like our time and put there, and it was like yeah, I guess he was like a weird time traveler. Yeah. Yeah. The. But, uh, I like their weird funky masks though. Like they should have had them like yeah, putting those them on. Really throughout. Why did it look like they just cut holes in baloney? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it, it looked like made of leather or something. Just kind of some sort of weird organic looking like know, bird's man. nest of like. Well, I mean, speaking of that, like what the heck's going on with that? I, like I was confused watching this whole movie. Like I was watching it, going, I get the premise, the gist of it, but I'm just like, there's so much going on. That it seemed like it was just too much going on. It was trying to be edgy, kind of like Guy Ritchie, like you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it was quite uh, Flatchen's level, <laughs> um, but the thing about it to me was it was unnecessarily complicated. Yeah, because once you really dialed down like what was going on, it could have been simplified it with a few twists, not the crazy amount of like this. There snake. weren't even like that many twist it was just yeah. sort of like who's okay they're going to this guy's house to do that and, and then it, it was tur- a weird pyramid scheme yeah it was a weird scheme and then in the end like it kind of just seemed like they were stealing from themselves did you get that yeah. vibe yeah like, it was a doggy dog it was like the joker wrote a movie yeah because it, 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 in the beginning in the beginning they kind of try to sell it like um like don Cheadle and benicio del toro they're two wise guys right they said yeah. they're two two low-level thugs or whatever First, I thought it was a way to just kill them, get rid of them all. But then they get stuck in this conspiracy yeah, over catalytic which converters. came out of nowhere, by the way. Like when Don Cheadle was just like, this goes up. I'm like, dude, where are you, where are you pulling this from? Yeah, and, and, and David Harbour was in this, and he was all right. And then I thought yeah. they were going to go somewhere like he'd be in on it. But they could have cut him out like almost completely. Oh, yeah. And he was he was unnecessary. He, I think John Hamm yeah, was... Was John Hamm a good guy or not? Th- yeah, that he was... was a, Bot guy is yeah. what it felt yeah. like. Bot guy? Bot. Bot like, guy? Yeah, like they bought him out, basically. Oh, he's bot. Okay. Yeah. I see what you mean. I don't, oh. I, I I, it was weird. Like it was no, like, he. but in the end, he returned the money to, yeah. to the person they stole it from. I feel like he just had this no, blandness he, about him. It, it was weird. It was just like, oh, I'm a good guy, but also yeah, I'm... He's like Dick Tracy without all the beaten up. Yeah. Like, right? Kind of. I, I don't know. I, uh, I don't... There was a few people that were in here... That were that I felt were just put in place, just because they were who they. I mean, they are who they are, you know. Like it just didn't. Yeah, exactly. That's what it felt like. <laughs> Do that three more times. Yeah, that was like ding, ding, ding. It was like three characters that did that. Um, and okay. it, it just it just felt like it was it put up. everywhere, man. <laughs> but I mean, again, like you mentioned, catalytic converters. When that whole thing crashed down, I was like. I was like, excuse me? Yeah, so so the the big heist at the beginning yeah. and then the heist that kept going through was they were stealing like a patent to catalytic converters. What is it? Some new exhaust system. Yeah, which, by the way, like you had no idea it was going to happen. You were actually just thinking everybody was after this bookie's book. Yeah, that's what I thought. But the first. funny thing was that there actually yeah. was a bookie's book. Yeah, but it was Which had, but it had nothing to do with anything. Else. And it wasn't even like it was it was mentioned twice. When it was mentioned the first time when hey this book went missing in the beginning of the mo- in the beginning of the movie. And then you have the second time where they're like, "Hey, Don Cheadle's character has it with him at all times." And you don't know if it's a book until he gets out of the freaking You know suitcase. what's one thing that I'm still curious about? Uh, you know when he goes to get the book yeah. and he's talking to Del Toro? Clarice. Yeah. No, when he's talking Oh, his uh, like ex-girlfriend or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was that guy? Was that her new husband? Yeah, that was her new husband. Or was, I thought that was her dad. I, or, that's what I. No, yeah, that was that like her dad? Like, I mean, look at old as how old Don Cheadle's character was in there. I mean, that yeah. guy. I think he was older than the dude he was talking to. So, the dude looked older, and there was also a baby crying in the background. So I'm like, wait a minute, what's like, uh, what's, what's, what's this whole story? I thought it was her dad, to? but it, it's one of those "don't come around here no more" kind of yeah, situations. Yeah, so it didn't matter. But yeah, so so yeah, Don Cheadle and uh, Benicio del Toro—they're hired to mm-hmm. go babysit, the babysit, which means uh, watch the family while that we we go take the guy out to go steal yeah. something, that kind of thing. Or else, yeah. I or else, hated the son so much. That whole family was weird. Yeah, dude. like the girl, the little girl was all like uh, 
teenager. I don't care, mom. Do whatever you want to do. I'm just going to chill over here. The yeah. kid, though, was like, I want to be a hero. Yeah. But also, oh. I'm a whiny what little kid. The kid, yeah, the kid was a narc. Um, she, I mean, it was kind of cool when John Hamm came in. It was a cow, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but it was kind of cool when John Hamm came in and uh, did the interview to everybody and everyone was yeah. telling a funky different story. Yeah. I, that was kind of cool. That was actually my, maybe my favorite part. That, that's the, uh, to me, that was the only part that made this feel like a caper movie. Yeah. Because and then, that's what they were going at. And then they go, then they then there's a, a quick moment where like maybe John Hamm is in on it too. Yeah. But like at the end, he kind of wasn't or he was in on it with everybody. Yeah. Which and, means like nobody. Yeah. There was like I, a I lot of- was, in on it with everybody, which is weird. Yeah, there was like a lot of oh, you this, can take this, this at face value, or you're like, what else is happening? Yeah, and then and then, uh, spoiler alert: Matt Damon's in this movie. Oh, he's uncredited. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I, the, they came on. I'm like, why is Matt Damon in this movie? Yeah, it's like, come on, dude, you're in everything. Yeah, you're in everything. And, and, and <laughs> uh, he was apparently running all the car companies anyway to avoid. I guess they were trying to stop the catalytic converter, and that was yeah. like the big like theme. And yeah. then the movie ends with like a a title crawl, like, "Oh yeah, the the they didn't want you to know that the the what do you call it, the catalytic converter like existed." I'm like, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, like this is the least interesting yeah. part of like the automobile. Yeah, industry. when the other shoe dropped on this movie, I was just like, "Is that it? Real? I just wasted nearly two hours of my life that I'm not going to get back." I'm so glad I took notes while watching it. No. <laughs> Yeah, Not the second time around. Yeah, I, I was. I thought about going back and like watching like the beginning part where like they 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 say like, "Oh, you want us to do this?" Like where they talk about the job in the beginning, yeah. but then the job in the beginning has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Yeah, no, not but at all. It, it's funny because like in the beginning they're told, "Oh, you were just random people who we don't know. I've never met you guys." Blah blah blah. But they're actually selected. Yeah, for because they also, why yeah. were they selected? Why okay. did they want them? I want to say that, yeah, Benicio del Toro was selected uh, because he was sleeping with one uh, Ray uh, Ray Liotta's wife. Okay, Frankie, and, whatever. But he yeah. went. But Frank was he though? Capella. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Oh, he yeah. made it okay. Like, yeah, for sure. And then um, Don Cheadle's character was selected because he stole the book and he ruined a bunch of the mob stuff. Which also, I thought there was going to be more mob involvement. It's, but yeah, it dude. was just like, uh, yeah, it was also like there. like I said, it was a it was a mishmash to me. This whole thing. I don't know if you guys want to start getting to letter grades here. For to me, this felt like a. Guy Ritchie movie that was trying to grasp at straws, man. That's that's what it felt like. It just felt like it just was like, no, not quite there. Not quite there. Yeah, um, like Bill Duke was in it, and he was like one of the one of the mobsters. And I liked him. He was in Predator, and I haven't seen him around in a while, so it's always good to see him. But like, what what you know, what what was this gang? They they let Don Cheadle go, but did they want to kill him in the beginning? Why did they want to kill him in the beginning? Because he had the ledger? I yes. guess. But um, it's like they're they let about him go you. because he let <laughs> well, this movie's title should have been called Mad monster. About You. <laughs> like he's like, hey, I'm gonna do this. Come in, you know, protect me. You'll get all the money you want. You know, like it, it was weird. Yeah, this whole movie, I don't know. It was just sort of like it's simple, but it's complicated at yeah. the same time, which which is not a fun place to be in. If fun you, if, place to be in. And yeah, if, if you're like us trying to watch a movie and trying to really just give it to you guys it didn't feel like i was watching it going what in god's name is going no, on you have to watch this movie twice in order to understand like the story like i watched it twice yeah and i was like oh okay now i understand more of this yeah but if you're but the fact that you theaters, have to watch it yeah. twice and it's so slow it's like slow churned oh, dude. ice cream and slow churned butter and it's then like, you're like wait is it over yet it's like oh it is over molasses <laughs> and then it's like oh you gotta watch <laughs> okay. it again to understand I don't know. Yes. Well, I, I like I said, they they could have cut David Harbour out of this movie, and that whole like they could have simplified. They could have just it. said, "Hey, we're gonna watch your family until you get back," a lot. and then that could have given David Harbour more of a "you're an important person right now" uh, role, yeah, and then not even involve his family. And, and then they they try to tell the story of David Harbour like beating up his boss, like, "Oh yeah, like, but I really did want to break into the safe, but like I didn't." But then he beats him up, like, "I don't want to beat you up. This is gonna hurt you more than it hurts me." Yeah. Like that whole thing, like, it was "What's the going one on?" Funny like, part. Like, I love my movie. job. <laughs> But this is very important. Yeah, David like, I don't want to lose my job. The but thing is, David Harbour is hard to believe as this guy that hasn't had some kind of history of violence because he's a freaking ogre yeah. of a man. Why didn't they get someone squirrely like a Rick Moranis type yeah, to they, play this character? Rick Moranis people is up. back. Just get him. <laughs> His got, kids are grown up. He got punched in New York, though, so I don't know if he's oh, down for it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, man. 
There we yeah, go. Poor guy. A poor elderly man. Uh, punch in the face. But yeah, man. I mean, and there was a lot of headshots in this movie. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, you're okay. Guns yeah. to heads. Caught and shot. Sure. Oh, go. I was thinking like your, your, what were your, you your artsy fartsy <laughs> like. Uh, like no, no, no. She was like, yeah, come on, come on, come no. on. Yeah, right no. there. No, Thank no, you. Not framing. Not yeah. framing. <laughs> no, I, not framing. The deaths were a bit unexpected, but I was like, oh, okay. I'm okay with them dying. Like, they, it's fine. They, they deflated yeah. Brendan Fraser. Oh, man. Actually, I wasn't even <laughs> sure if he was dead. No, yeah. so fat, you heard him get hit. It's not like he just pulled a hammy. He was like, oh. <laughs> it's funny because I don't remember him dying. And then the second time, I'm like, oh, yeah, he did die. Okay. Like, just oh, to man. confirm it, he did die. Well, he just couldn't get back up. And then Del Toro, he was uh, he was killed by, like, his girlfriend, right? Yeah. Yeah, which came out of nowhere. Wait, was there, everyone was, like, sleeping with, like, everyone in this kind of mo- in this movie. Because, like, what? remember the, was the... David Harbour. Yeah, he was sleeping with, oh, yeah, the, he was secretary. Sleeping with the secretary. But that yeah. was a different woman from the woman who was delivering the the uh what? The Did honey what do you call it? The uh I can't even hummingbird. There was a hummingbird. Oh yeah, there, oh, yeah, yeah. There was that a was a friend. So that was a neighbor. She wasn't banging anyone though, right? No. no. Oh, I feel Although like, it was like weird. I feel like, like I saw just... her again later on and they were like, yeah. oh, I came I could... back for the hummingbird feeder, but like you didn't know. I'm like, who's this woman? Dude, like yeah. she came back, but like she's, an, was she having an affair with somebody? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> this movie was just all over the place. Uh, like, a lot of their... random stories that yeah. you're like, do I have to follow this? Is this important enough? No? And, all right. There's a variant there. <laughs> that's <laughs> the thing though. Like a lot of the parts didn't really matter in the end. It's just like, wait a minute. Like why? Yeah. Why, why was I shown this? Yeah, exactly. Had nothing to do with the entire freaking. I don't know. Well, we we thing. didn't we didn't see Army of the Dead, right? Yeah. But a lot of people, like I was, you know, I watch videos and you know talk to people. But a lot of people said that Army of the Dead was just made so like Zack Snyder can like test this crazy lens out. Yeah. Which like a high or a low depth of field lens, so all you see is like what's right in front of you. So everything that moves before and past it gets really fuzzy, right? Yeah, it was razor sharp, like field of view. Yeah. Like, so freak. to me, this movie was Steven Soderbergh's. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. This was Steven Soderbergh's Army of the Dead. Like, I'm gonna make a movie that's so arty and so hip that it, you know, everyone's gonna get like eye cancer. Yeah. You know, I just mean? got my eye back, so like I, don't, I didn't need to. Like, <laughs> I know. That. I just noticed that your eyes not red. Yeah, and you know, I don't know if I like like I don't think I like Steven Soderbergh because like you're always dogging on the Ocean's movies. Yeah, <laughs> and and I I personally think okay, so the, the year 2000 Academy Awards. Okay, this this totally happened. Gladiator was up for everything. Yeah, right, nearly right. Such a good movie. Yeah, if okay. you watch the extended cut, well, I like them both. Right, it's even better. Yeah, even better. But like you know, Ridley Scott, he was an old dude when he made that, and yeah. like he's twenty years older now because it happened twenty years yeah. ago. So he's not going to win an Oscar. Twenty-one years ago, <laughs> right? Anyway, that movie was up for everything, and then everyone who won, Russell Crowe's up there. Yeah, I, I want to thank everybody, but uh, I want to thank Ridley Scott. And everyone yeah. was like, hey, you know, my parents, God, whatever, but I got to thank Ridley Scott. Yeah, everyone came. You know, Ridley we, we worked. Scott, it was man. good, but Ridley Scott. And then at the very end, best picture, Bruno, best direct, because best, best, best picture, all the producers, yeah, yeah. I got to thank Ridley Scott. Then best director, best director goes to Steven Soderbergh for traffic. Steven Soderbergh for traffic. I was about to throw, like, ah, I was about to smash my well, giant like, TV and hit Coke it in the face yeah. with it. And I've seen traffic and I was like, I've seen it many times. I don't understand it, like, it's how it's in the zeitgeist still. I think it gets because like all the hip Hollywood people were in it. Yes. And you know, they just voted for themselves and they didn't really Scott. I don't yeah. know really Scott. Guys, but yeah, but Gladiator. Nope, nobody like Russell Crowe. That's why he was Do you guys even remember Russell Crowe traffic? Run it. Like awesome. I remember watching it. I remember it, hating I didn't traffic. Really I saw it and I was like, it. this movie sucked. Yeah, like I don't understand why it blew up so much. It it had that like, like I said, Steven Soderbergh stole yeah. the best Absolutely best uh, director. And now, and now he gets. You heard it here. Yeah. And now he gets to make movies like this that kill your eyeballs. <laughs> oh, my face balls. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do letter grades. I said, I think that's everything that I want to say. Uh, do you want to you start the kickoff? Uh, yeah. I'm going to give this one a C. Plus. And the reason I'm giving it a C plus is it says. While this movie was filled with an ensemble cast of great actors, they were all forced to carry the film on their street cred, or like I said, who they are. Um, if this was a nod to, to any Guy Ritchie movie, like any of his gangster movies, it was more of a wink. It wasn't a nod. 
And I said, in the words of Edna Mode from Pixar's The Incredibles, my God, you've gotten fat. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm going to give it a C plus two. Uh, I say it was an interesting watch, but the story seemed too simple and confusing at the same time. The standout performances of Don Cheadle and Benicio Del Toro playing cool wise guys is worth the watch. But the further you get into the story, the more I found myself caring less about the movie, which is not a place you want to be. What, what about you? You got a letter grade? What's uh, I'm going to give it a C plus. It was, it, it had, okay, it had a lot of potential to be really good. They could have drawn in more mob stuff, which they didn't. The actors, you know, Don Cheadle, Benicio Del Toro. Whenever I see Del Toro, whether it's Benicio or Guillermo, I'm expecting something good. They did a good job. So for them, they definitely get a C plus. All right. Well, there you Are go. Are they related? Who? No. The Del Toros? No. No. I used to know. confuse them both one when is I Puerto Rican, one the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like uh, we shouldn't be putting them all in the same bucket. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that is been, <laughs> that has been our review of uh, No Sudden Move. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. For the gruesome twosome, Mr. Abel Panetta and Mr. Jose Rodriguez, I'm your host, Mark Rubalcaba. We will see you next time over and out. <laughs>